Hello everybody and welcome to my channel once again. In my previous video we saw how to add functionality to an already existing object dynamically. In particular we saw how to add um, more equipment to different king objects which class only had a sword by default. And also we saw how to do that the Ruby way, that is by mixing modules. But what if you want to add that functionality to all the objects from a class and not only to a single object? In Ruby, you have three different ways of doing that. That is using include, extend or prepend. But before we see the differences between these three methods, we need to take a look to the Ruby ancestor chain. So to understand the ancestor chain, we need to know first two concepts about the Ruby object model. First of all, everything in Ruby is an object, even classes are objects. And second, when you send a message to an object and that object isn't able to handle that message, it delegates that message to the next object in its ancestor chain. That means that the ancestor chain determines the order in which that method or message is delegated. So in short, the ancestor chain is the order collection of all parent classes our object class inherits from, plus all the modules that are mixed into it. So to understand that better, let's see that with an example. Let, let me create first a class, a simple class, and see how its ancestor chain looks like. Okay, let me show you the ancestor chain with this example here. Let's create a very simple class with this one-liner and we can access the ancestor chain for our just created class by using the ancestors method on it. There you can see that um, in the beginning, at the bottom, we have our class, which we just created. Then we have the object class here. Then some modules, like this one for JSON, this one for pretty printing, and then here the, the kernel module. And then in the end, at the top of the ancestor chain, there is this basic object, which is the parent class for all Ruby objects. In the next sections, we will see how you can change the, the place in which these modules that we will mix are put into this ancestor chain, depending on whether you use include, prepend or extend. So let's start with the include. Whenever you use include in your class definition, it puts that module in your class ancestor chain right in between that class and its parent class. So to make an analogy, it's like as if your class had another parent class, right? Let me show it to you with an example. Okay, let's see how include works. For that, what we are going to do is reuse the class we used for the previous video, which was a king class. And let's say we want, to, we want all kings to be able to greet. For that, what we are going to do is we are going to create a module with a grid method, okay? So we are going to just say here, hello world. And we will include this within our king class. So like this. Okay, so if we take a look to the ancestor chain of our king class here, you see that the greeting module was included just in between our king class and its parent class object. So it's more or less like if the greeting class had be become the new parent class of this, at least in terms of the ancestor chain and how the method um, search gets resolved, right? So, and to see that this is working, we can create a new king object and just say greet and voila, we see that it's able to, to greet. It says hello world. So now what happens if we have several modules? Okay, let's see that. So imagine that as a king, you want to sanction rules. So we have, we are going to include within this sanctioning module, we are going to create a sanction method, which just said, says, um, I hereby 
extension this rule. And if we include these two modules within our King class, you say, for example, first one, we will say greeting, and then we say second, we say sanctioning, right? So right now, if we go to see our ancestor chain, you see that you have the king, then you have sanctioning, then greeting, and then object. Why is that? Because when this gets executed, first comes this include greeting, right? So in the beginning, there was nothing. We had the king class and its parent class, which was object. And then when this include here comes, it adds the greeting in between the king and the object. So here, right? In between the king and the object. Here. And then comes the next one, which is sanctioning. And now it adds the sanctioning module in the ancestor chain in between the, the previous parent, which was greeting, and the king class. Right. On the other hand, when you use prepend, it puts your module right at the bottom of the ancestor chain. That is even before the class itself. This is great, for example, when you want to surround already existing methods with new functionality. Let me show it to you. Okay, do you remember our previous video example in which we decorated king objects? So imagine that instead of decorating individual objects, you would like to decorate all the objects of this class, of this king class in, the, in, in this example. So for that, we would use prepend. Why? Because prepend adds the module right at the beginning of the ancestor chain, even before the class itself. So for that, our king class had an equipment method. And if you remember that method just had a sword as as equipment here, right? So if we had Arthur and we say Arthur equipment, it says a sword, sword, right? So imagine that we want to decorate, as we said, all the objects from, from this class. So we can, in this case, have, the, have a shield module and let them all have a shield in their equipment. Okay, probably instead of shield module, I should have seen set shield decorator, but whatever. So now we go to our king class and prepend our shield module here. So right now, if we see, if we take a look at this ancestor chain, you can see that the shield module was just included here before the, the, the king class itself. So right in the, in the beginning, at the beginning of this ancestor chain here. So now if we say Arthur equipment, we should see both the sword and the shield. So, and also you can note that because the shield module is here in the ancestor chain and king is here, in the module you can use super so that the equipment method here from the king class is called, okay? This is also useful, for example, if you want to put logic around your methods. A good example would be uh, logging, for example, in which you have a method and you want to include logging before and after that method. That would be also a great example for this. Okay, let's go with the last one, which is extend. Extend is a little bit different because it adds the methods as if they were class methods. Let me show you how it works. Okay, now last see the extend example. For that, let's, let me first 
exit rear and clear all the screen so that it's more clear to you. So remember that extend adds the method as if they were class methods, right? So let me create an example for you in which we have a so-called repository of kings and then we want to add a finder method like if in rails you would have for example find by name so let's try to mimic this in the in this method here so in this example here so we have uh, the so-called we are going to initialize this uh, repo from kings kings and we are going to store there as if they were a class variable. Uh, we init as an empty array. And then every time we in add a new king, create a new king object with initialize, besides giving it a name and saving it so that we can then later search by name, we add the new added king to the king's repository we created before. So, like that. Um, then let's add a reader for the name. And then let me also change the inspect method so that it's easier for us to know which key we have found. So here we interpolate the name like that. And that should be it. So let's now create the, this finder module and extend the king class with it. So for that, uh, I would define a, let's create a king finder module and imagine that in this one we have find by name method. So what we will do is from this king's repository, we would then select the king with the same name that the one we have provided as an attribute, as a parameter, like that. So note here that in this find by name we haven't used self so if we had used self it would it would be more or less clear that we have added it as a as if it was a, a a class method right as we did here with kings in the beginning but in this case we didn't so the fact that this is added as a class method will be the consequence of using extend as we can see here so for that we open again our king class and we just say, okay, I want to extend it with the king finder. So let's create now two instances of this king class. So we have the king, whoops, Arthur and Aragorn again, king, So we have two kings here and let's say now if we have the find by name which we have because I have thing here with this nice autocomplete that now we have with Rails, sorry Ruby 3 which is great, very awesome and let's find by Arthur by name, let's keep this name here and voila, it works. As you can see, we have just added this finder find by name method by just um, extending our king class with our king finder method. And that's it for today. 
So if you like it, this video, please remember to smash that like button and to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to leave me any question, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much to all my subscribers for being there and support me. Thank you also very much for all the comments you are leaving me. Thank you in particular to Juan Vázquez for telling me, okay, Alberto, go on and make this video today. And also thank you, Braga, for making suggestions about the quality of these videos. I hope this one has better quality than the previous ones. So please, guys, if you want to know about anything or you want me to make any kind of video, leave a comment down below. And that's it. See you in my next video. Adios.